Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. And what does that mean? That means that we are seeking the truth of the Word of God, the whole Word of God, nothing but the Word of God, and substantiated by true history, substantiated by actual facts, so that we understand what kind of religion has evolved in the world. You compare that with the Bible, and you look at what people claim is Christianity, and somehow they don't mix together very well. And the great authority for the Roman Catholic Church is Peter. Because they claim, and in almost every single Mass and Eucharist, they recite Matthew 16, 18. And then they say that this is the authority that Jesus gave to Peter to become the first pope. Is that true? Well, we're going to find out it is not true. So how is it that hundreds of millions and well over a billion people believe it? Well, let me read you a quote that I've read several times, which tells about all these things that have been foisted upon people, especially in religion and Catholicism, how it came about to be. It works in politics, and it works in economics, and it works in religion. Because, you see, people don't want to take the time to prove the truth so they can get rid of the error. This has been given so many times, Matthew 16, about where they claim that Peter was made the first pope. And the fact that so many people believe it is based upon this quotation from Dresden James. When a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly preposterous and its speaker a raving lunatic. To speak the truth today in politics, you're a lunatic. To speak the truth today concerning the economic lies and system that we're under, you're a lunatic. To proclaim that the Catholic interpretation of Matthew 16 and their subsequent conclusion that Jesus made Peter the first pope, to say that is not true, you're a lunatic. Matthew 16, beginning in verse 13. Jesus questioned his disciples, saying, Who do men declare me the Son of Man to be? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But you, who do you declare me to be? Then Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And here is the key verse. Verse 18, And I say also to you that you are Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the grave shall not prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you may bind on the earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you may loose on the earth will have already been loosed in heaven. Now, the translation that is in most Bibles is this. 
whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That's not true. Can a man bind God to a lie? The God of truth who never lies? Can a man come along and proclaim something and by demand of his office force God to accept that and proclaim it to be true? Now think about this for a minute. If that were so, then man would be God, and God would be beneath man. Do you think that's ever going to happen? No way. And that's why you also need to book The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, so that you can see the complete historical expose as to why the Catholic interpretation of Matthew 16 is a lie. But repeat it often enough, people believe it. And especially in today's world, living our busy lives, we can't be bothered with the research and finding all that out. I have important things I need to do is not the most important thing that you need to do in your life is to find the truth about God, the truth about Jesus Christ, the truth about the Word of God? Is your baseball game, your football game, your hockey game, your soccer game, are those more important than God? Number one, God the Father had to reveal it to Peter because God is greater than man. So it had to be revealed. Therefore, it didn't make him the first pope. Now notice what Jesus said, verse 18. And I say also to you that you are Peter. Now the Greek there is Petros. Now what does Petros mean? Does it mean a big rock? Well, let's let the Bible interpret the Bible. Now, that's what, what you need to do. Let's come here to the Gospel of John, the first chapter, and we are going to find exactly what Peter means. First, he found his own brother. Now, that he is Andrew. Simon and said to him, we found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. Now, Peter's brother was the first one to understand that. What do you know about that? Not Peter. And he led him to Jesus, and when he saw him, Jesus said, You are Simon the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is being interpreted a stone. Petros for Peter. In Aramaic, it's Cephas, and he's called Cephas in other places, means a stone. All right, let's come back here. But upon this rock, now the Greek word here for rock is Petra, and that means massive cliff. And who was Jesus before he became the Lord of the New Testament? He was the Lord God of the Old Testament. And he is that rock, not Peter. You go through the book of Psalms, and what do you find in the book of Psalms? He's called the rock, the rock, the rock. Jesus said, if you obey me and keep my words and you build upon the rock. That is Christ. Now let's see that Paul also interpreted that. So we need to understand. Let's come back here to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Let's see how rock, Petra, refers to Christ, not to Peter. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Now, I do not wish you to be ignorant of this, brethren. Interesting statement, isn't it? 
How much of the Bible are you ignorant of? And what are you going to say in the day when God says, Did you have a Bible? I said, Yes, I had a Bible. Well, did you ever read it and study it? Well, once in a while. But I depended on the minister at church. Why didn't you prove things? Why did you remain in ignorance? You have no excuse. I sent you a Bible. What are you going to answer? I do not wish you to be ignorant of this, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud in the sea, and they all ate the same spiritual meat and they all drank of the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Do you think that Jesus Christ would build his church upon anything other than himself? You think about that for a minute. Who is the real head of the church? Do you know? If it's the church of Jesus Christ, if it's the church of God, it has to be that Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and he is guiding it spiritually. Now let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter, and see what else that Paul writes concerning Christ as the head of the church. Let's pick it up here in verse 19. So then you are no longer aliens and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of the household of God. You are being built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone, not Peter. And by the way, when Paul wrote this, Guess where he was? He was in prison and in Rome. And this is in 61 to 63 AD. And the claim was that Peter went there and was the head of the church in Rome from 42 AD onward until he died. And if that was a true doctrine, why didn't the apostle Paul while he was there recognize that? And why, while he was there, Peter did not come to visit him? Verse 21, in whom all the building being conjointly fitted together is increasing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together for a habitation of God in the Spirit. So we need to understand. Let's come back here to the first chapter. Now notice Christ's position. No mention of Peter. No mention of Peter. Far above every principality and authority and power and lordship and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. For he, that is God the Father, has subordinated all things under his feet and has given him to be head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things in all. Now, let's come back to Matthew 16. And upon this rock, meaning himself, I, Christ, will build my church. Do you think he's going to build it on any infallible man? Look at what Peter did. He denied Christ three times. Christ had to correct him for coming and rebuking Jesus personally, saying, Oh, Lord, going to Jerusalem, God will never allow these things to happen to you. And he said, get you behind me, Satan. Think of that. We'll see some other statements of Peter which substantiate that it could never have been built upon Peter. Do you think that 
God the Father would send Elohim to the earth to bring this ministry, to preach the gospel, to train the disciples, and then go back to heaven and leave it in charge of a man and build it upon Peter? Never happened. So that rock is Christ. And the gates of the grave shall not prevail against it because Christ is ever living and God is ever calling people. And so therefore, when a person endures to the end and comes to the end of their lives, the church perpetually goes on with new people. And then at the return of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, they are all resurrected. And that's what it means to be born again. So you see what the Bible teaches is completely opposite of what the world believes because they have been told this web of lies gradually over centuries and centuries and centuries. And at every Eucharist, they repeat it. You are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church. And they don't even acknowledge the truth of what it really means. Let's go on. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus gives the keys of understanding of the truth of the Bible to him so that he will understand what has already been bound in heaven so that he must follow that in making any binding decision on the earth. Now you go back and you listen to and read what Peter said to Simon Magus, the one who went to Rome in 42 AD and was the false Peter. He said, may your money perish with you for you thought that you could buy the gift of God. Think about that. What did Peter uphold? Jesus Christ, the truth of God. Now let's come to Matthew 21 in verse 42. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? It's not interesting how religious readers never read the scriptures. The stone or the rock that the builders rejected this has become the head of the corner. And that's what we read in the book of Ephesians, correct? This was from the Lord. And it is wonderful in our eyes. Because of this, I say to you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and it shall be given to a nation that produces the fruits of it. Now he was speaking prophetically of the church. And the one who falls on this stone, that is in repentance, shall be broken. But on whomever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now, is any man able to do that? Is the apostle Peter strong enough as a human being to do that? No, he was not. Then let's come over here to Matthew 22 concerning the Christ, how that even David called him Lord. Verse 42 of Matthew 22, what do you think concerning the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, if David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him, neither dared anyone from that day to question him any more. All right, again, we see it is Christ who is at the right hand of God. Now let's look at another scripture here in the book of Acts. Acts, the second chapter, verse 32, This Jesus has God raised up, whereof we are witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted by the right hand of God, 
and having received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, he has poured out this that you are now seeing and hearing. Christ was in heaven doing this. God did not build, nor did Christ build the church upon Peter, a fallible man. So back there in Matthew 16, Jesus is saying, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for God has revealed it to you. And I say that you are Petros, a stone, and upon this Petra, the rock, meaning himself, Jesus would build his church. And the very first thing he did after the resurrection on the day of Pentecost was to send the Holy Spirit in power to empower the apostles to preach and teach. And Peter gave full credit to God, full credit to Christ, not himself. So this is the truth concerning Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18. Jesus never declared Peter to be the head of the Roman Catholic Church. He never gave him the authority to replace himself. So that is the truth concerning the Catholic claim that Peter was the first pope and the head of the Roman Catholic Church. Those lies came centuries later and with misinterpretations. Now, this becomes very important where we're going to go with the rest of this. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home be sure and visit our website, cbcg.org. This is for you to understand the Bible. And since we're living in the last days, the most important thing you need to do is find out who is God, who is Christ, and what are they doing. And you need to ask the question, are you on God's side or are you on the world's side? So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying... So long, everyone.